Welcome friends. Today in the kitchen, we are going to be making cottage cheese. And um, just like a lot of things in the food world, there are different ways to get to the end. And so I'm gonna do cottage cheese two ways. I'm gonna do the old school uh, cheese maker from the 1400s version. And I'm going to do the sort of new school internet blog version. Um, so they both start out with milk and you have to heat the milk up to very specific temperatures. So into this pot, milk. I thought it was kind of funny a couple of weeks ago, one of our videos was part of a discussion on Reddit. And it wasn't a discussion about the recipe or the video or about how much they hated me. It was people laughing at milk in bags <laughs> and talking about milk in bags. Yes, we buy milk in bags. We buy a big bag of milk and inside the big bag of milk, there's four liters and it's cut between three smaller bags. And um, every house has a little plastic jug Put the milk bag in a little plastic jug and a lot of people have this handy little cutter that attaches to the jug and you just clip off a corner, you stick the little plastic bit through a hole on the side and there's your milk. Easy. It's been that way for a very long time. Um, although it's mostly just prevalent in central Canada. You see it a little bit in other parts of Canada but central Canada, Ontario, that's where you mostly see it. Now I've got a thermometer in each pot and an alarm set when it reaches a certain point. So the one with, with the bacteria and the rennet, it relies on bacteria and an enzyme uh, changing the way the milk reacts. And you have to be very careful and specific with your temperatures on that one. Uh, the one that uses the vinegar, uh, you can take it up to a lot hotter, which in theory takes less time because you're just waiting for the acid in this white vinegar um, to do its work. It's a totally different process. One has two ingredients and one has three ingredients. Although I've got a whole pile of different ingredients out here to talk about. The next thing that goes into this pot, as soon as we get up to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, the next thing that goes into this pot is you want to inoculate it with a mesophilic bacterial culture. Now you can buy this culture online in a little packet. It comes dry. You can buy it from a cheese shop. You can buy it online from say Amazon. Um, but a lot of the recipes that I see online counsel you to use buttermilk. Um, I'm gonna put a link up here to my rant about buttermilk. All buttermilk sold in North America is pretty much cultured buttermilk, which means they put bacteria into it. Um, but the problem is, even though this has the bacteria that we're looking for, 99% of all buttermilk sold in North America is pasteurized before it's sent to the store, which means they've killed all of the bacteria that we're looking for. So it's not really gonna do the job that we want it to do. Second on the list um, is kefir. Kefir is available in pretty much every grocery store in North America. I mean, I've seen it in tiny little grocery stores in the Ozarks. Um, and if you can find it there, you can find it pretty much anywhere. It's also available across Europe. And so it is never pasteurized, it seems. It always comes with live bacterial culture. And the bacteria that's in this one is the bacteria that we want in that pot. So. We're at 74 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to get this up to 85 before we move on to the next step. Okay, so the temperature is almost there on this pot. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the next ingredient because it's gonna move pretty quickly. The next ingredient is rennet. Um, rennet is an enzyme traditionally made from the lining of uh, an animal's stomach. Um, there is vegetable rennet available. I think it's made from thistles. It'll do the same job. So if you're weirded out by the lining of a, of a pig or a cow's stomach uh, in your cheese, then maybe you shouldn't be eating cheese because it's mostly made from that. Um, but you can buy a vegetable rennet. This is called junket. Um, these are dry rennet tablets. And I've had limited success with this. Um, this makes an incredible pudding, incredible pudding. Um, I love junket pudding. 
Um, but for making cheese, I found it's not terribly reliable. I get mixed results with it, so I tend to want to use actual liquid rennet. Liquid rennet doesn't last as long. Junket tablets can be in your cupboard forever um, and still work. Or though, maybe they don't still work. So here I've got a little bit of water, and you only need like four drops um, for this amount of milk. So I drop it into a little bit of water just to make it easier to mix into the milk. Okay, so we are at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about right. We were shooting for 85. You definitely don't want to go over 90. So as soon as you reach that point, turn off the heat. I've got a really good heavy pot here. It's going to retain a lot of heat, but it will also have carryover heat. So even after you turn off the burner, the temperature may rise. So the first thing in is we mix in the kefir. Um, stir that in. And the temperature is very important with this one because above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to both kill the bacteria that we want and stop the enzyme action. So that temperature of between um, 80 to 90 to start is really important, and you don't want it to drop below, say, 75 over the course of making it. Uh, so depending on where you are and what your room temperature is, you may have to wrap it in a towel later or just keep the heat on gently. There we go. So next in is the rennet mixed in the water. And we just pour that in and give it a really good stir. You just want to make sure that it's fully mixed in and combined. That's good. Now, we just put a lid on and wait. So this one has reached our target temperature of 120. Um, this one is not, like I said, this one is not as dependent on temperature. It's not as critical. And so in goes the vinegar, and we stir that in. And you're going to notice as soon as you stir it in, um, the whole thing's going to change. So turn off that burner, because I don't want it to get any hotter. Um, and immediately you start to see curds forming. So you just stir that in gently. Make sure that it's fully distributed. OK, so the one with the rennet and the cultures, it's thickening up, but it's not quite ready yet. The one with the vinegar, it's done all that it's going to do. So the next step is to drain it. And to do that, you need some cheesecloth. And get yourself some quality cheesecloth. Um, that stuff that you get at the grocery store isn't very good for this process. You need something with a much finer mesh. Some people are going to call it butter muslin. This is grade 90, which refers to the weave. And you don't need a piece this big. Um, I just know that this quality, I can reuse it over and over and over again. And having it a little bit bigger makes it easy to squeeze out the whey later. So take this and you just pour it into your cheesecloth. Now, just let this drain. You want the whey to drain away. Um, I'm saving it because I'm going to make ricotta with it. So come on back for that episode. I'm going to be doing it with both of the leftover ways. Squeeze this as dry as you can. Run it under a cold tap and keep squeezing it until you get rid of all the whey. As much of the whey as you can get rid of, um, the cheese will last longer. OK, so this is totally set. I don't know if you can see that, but it jiggles. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. So now we need to cut the curd. Um, and instead of using a knife and scratching the bottom of my pot and ruining the blade on a knife, I'm just going to use one of these palette knives that you use for um, frosting a cake. Since I'm no good at frosting a cake anyway, I'm not going to hurt this. So let's cut the curd. So you want to slice it like this. And then turn 90 degrees and slice it the other way into little cubes. Now, as you're slicing, you should see the whey start to separate a little bit. Um, and if you don't notice it a whole lot, don't worry at this point. Just, uh, just put your knife in on a 45 degree angle, 45 degrees to the other cuts, and slice it again. And that's going to do the job just fine. 
Now, we need to heat this up gently to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And I mean gently bring it up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. We need to cook it for about an hour, hour and a half in order to cook the whey out of the curds. Um, so you want to do this very gently, you want to do it very slowly. All of the information will be in the recipe box below. So this has been cooking for about an hour and a half and you can see the curds are really sort of pronounced and nice and stiff. And the whey is this sort of clear yellowy color. Whereas this is the whey that's left over from the vinegar batch and you can see that it is really white. So I'm going to go out on a limb and take a wild guess and say that I'm probably going to get twice as much cottage cheese from the rennet version. Um, exactly the same process now. Pour it out into a sieve lined with some cheesecloth. Squeeze as much of the whey out as possible and then rinse it and squeeze it again. And again, I'm going to save this way to make ricotta. All right, what's with the, what's, what's, with, what's with this? It's three cheese Monty. Which one has the, okay, so. <laughs> which, which one has the dollar under it? Yeah, um, so I've made, I have made, that hey, doesn't no, have no. a dollar. I have, stop it. I didn't, what am I looking at? So I I've made, his cheese. I've made two cheeses and one is a store-bought cheese. Oh, you've made two of so these. I've, I've okay. made the, our cottage cheese. So two of them I've made using a different process and one is store-bought. And I've written on the bottom of the bowl. I've tried to put as much, the exact same amount in each bowl. And I've pretty much at this point forgotten which one is which, but I sort of have an idea. You have no clue. Okay, so I'm going to say visually, I'm going to say that's the store-bought. But that's not the kit. That, I'm just, there's okay. my first vote. Okay, so the one in the middle, Julie says right off the bat, is the store-bought. Let's... But so, uh, taste could mean something different. Let's start over here. So it's got the flavor. Mm hmm. Yeah. But it's not chunky. It's a little bit grainy. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that one's a little bit really fine curd. Yeah. Like it's not bit. the chunky kind yeah. of cheese kind of thing you expect. Don't like that one at all. If I could spit that out, I would. So that one's got the chunky, but it's sour. Oh, it's got a real tang to it. Yeah. 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 Don't like that one. Okay. I almost need a juice in between. That one's really tangy. That one mm -hmm. has a really strong flavor. Yep. And then this one. Creamy. You have it. That one's super creamy, but it doesn't have any flavor. I was going to say, the flavor's not right. It's kind of bland. No flavor, super creamy. This one is the most flavorful, well, to me, most flavorful with a little bit grainy. And I think we both agree that one's not right. That one's bitter. Yeah. I, I prefer to eat this one. Okay. If I was going to choose, that's the one I would choose to eat. Yep. First, second, third. Okay. I think I would choose that one first to eat because I you? like the mouth feel. I don't think it has the flavor that I like, but it has the mouthfeel. I'm up for the flavor versus I like, the mouthfeel. I like the flavor of this one, though, but I don't like the mouthfeel. Yeah, I went for flavor, you went for yeah. See, okay. there you go. So, so it's a subtle, that's just a personal thing. Store-bought. Crap. Well. <laughs> okay, and the one that Julie likes is the one made with vinegar. And the one that I like is the one made with rennet. Okay, interesting. So, and do you know why I picked that one as the store bought? This one? Yeah. Mainly because I figured I figured it would be able to have the the chunky texture more so than you would as a home okay. as a homemaker. You know what I mean? Yep. As a homemaker, that's a tough thing to get hold of, and that's really what it was based on. So it's it's really interesting because my first guess. The one that was made with the rennet mm -hmm. um, took the longest to make, and I had the I this one made 3 times as much cheese as the one that was made with vinegar out of the same amount of milk. Okay, I need that context. <laughs> yep. Three times as much cheese out of the same amount of milk, which means this one has a whole bunch of, and I'll sort of list them, a whole bunch of different milk proteins that were caught up and made into the cheese, coagulated and made. Whereas, which is why it has the texture probably. Which is why it has really the texture. that texture, that texture. Whereas this one is probably only made up of one main milk protein that is curdled by the yeah. vinegar. Um, 
which is interesting that it has a different flavor. And I wonder if that flavor is partly from the, citri uh, the, the vinegar acid or the citric acid or whatever you could use to, to make it. But I think we both agree that the, the store bought. Um, to me, that was the least favorite, yes. The, the store bought was the least favorite. Yeah. Okay, so um, I guess at home you have to choose whether you want to spend three days all so day all, all day <laughs> all day all day making something um that has amazing mouthfeel or just a couple of hours to make something that's pretty good but you don't get much of mm -hmm. um although this the way that was left over from this one you're going to find out in the next episode <laughs> that i was able to turn that way into ricotta oh very nice and I like it, ricotta. yeah so um this is a two for one so but on a different note, what if you blended the two? Would you get a happy medium? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I, and I, 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 think, I think either of these two would be great for anything that you cook cottage cheese in. I mean, we're just tasting it now. Well, yeah. I mean, that, and that's... That one, I think, would be better if you were putting it in something where you're looking for the cheese to be that yeah. creamy kind of... Like that, a lasagna or something well, like and that. And that's it. A lot of people put, 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 that, cheese, put in cottage lasagna. cheese yeah. instead of ricotta because it is, when you go to the grocery store, More affordable. Uh, le less expensive. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... There you give, go. Give it a try. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.